Hello, Luther Kruger here, Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking, based in Minneapolis. And I'm in lovely Acaruña, Spain, at the 2023 Console Foods Conference. And three years ago, 2020 anyway, uh, I met Michael Bonk at the same conference in Faro, Portugal. And it was the beginning of a, of a deviation on uh, my path in solar cooking. But first, uh, got to learn a little bit more about Michael. And, I usually have three questions and they're all open-ended. Uh, the first one is, how did you discover solar energy in any way, shape, or form, and then specifically solar cooking? For me, it uh, began in 1992, uh, and it was actually solar cooking. Um, when I visited a friend in Colorado, I live in Germany, but uh, she had emigrated, studied in the US, and remained there, 1992. And um, she had some magazines there from the garage sales. One was called an Autobond magazine. And I read an article there about an NGO based in Sacramento, which has founded some years before, um, Solar Cookers International. It was uh, built around a project in Kenya where they wanted to save the landscape from uh, deforestation and desertification uh, because they normally, people there use the so-called three stone fires which consumes a lot of wood and so uh, the deserts grow and grow and, and at the same time in this area they have a lot of sunshine and so our western idea was <laughs> Um, maybe solar cookers could solve the problem. And um, when I read it in those days, uh, it appeared sensible. Sure. <laughs> yeah, later I learned it is a little bit more complicated, but this was the first time I read the word solar cooker and the context. And I lived in a normal flat in Düsseldorf in Germany uh, without any uh, garden or anything and so uh, I did not start or I didn't have the intention to build cookers for myself, I just wanted to know how it works. Then four years later, 1996, I had my first internet connection and I remembered it. And looked up Solar Cookers International and they already had a web website. So I went there, typed my email address into the box for the um, mailing list and then in the following years I only read passively what these strange people discussed. Really esoteric topics <laughs> and what we had in our conference yesterday and what is a topic, the topic number one during the decades, what do we do at night? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How can we store heat? And they had really interesting solutions. I think there was a guy in Canada who had these oil barrels, old oil barrels, uh, horizontal, a hole in the top filled with granite or stones and old oil. And uh, had some construction to heat up the oil at daytime so that it was almost boiling and uh, the, the hole in the top fit with the cook pot and so he could cook in the evening. Sure. Yes, uh, one solution and, and so on. Uh, so, But I never felt the impulse to, to build anything. So then many years later, 2008, um, 16 years after I have read it first time, I was uh, making web pages for some years then, and um, the type of web pages called blogs became more and more, and uh, WordPress was uh, the most widespread software for this, and I thought I should learn it, and it is easier to learn it when you set up your own blog and write something. And when you do so, it is good to have a topic. And then came this uh, line, this, this track from the past <laughs> about solar cooking. Said, okay, now is the time. 
And I had a new uh, flat with a balcony and in the afternoon, it was like here, uh, I had a lot of sunshine and it was early May 2008 and a sunny day. I uh, took the plan for the cook it from the website of SCI, built it, two hours or so and not really complicated, set it up, it cooked. I could eat it, what I had cooked. Next day the same, next day the same, always. And I live in an area where we have not so much sunshine, sure. but it appeared to me like a kind of magic. It should to be like this. If it had rained the second day or so, maybe we would not see here, sit yeah. here now. Yes. <laughs> but it was meant to be. <laughs> so I, I wrote it down uh, in my blog and because it was so successful with this primitive cooker, cardboard, uh, less than one euro uh, material. <laughs> so yeah. It was incredible. And everybody uh, ran away after some days because I, I talked the solar cooking. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think it was a little bit hard for them, but <laughs> uh, I was so enthusiastic because it is some, I had the same feeling when I, I have uh, cooked my first bread. It was it is a little bit irreal. Uh, yeah. So and uh, then uh, it created a, a dynamic on its own, like ne nothing before and and after this solar cooking stuff. And a um, few weeks later. Somebody, uh, everybody knew I was in solar cooking in, in the first weeks. <laughs> everybody, uh, yeah. And so, one was in the solar center in North Germany. They know everything about renewable energies. Solar thermic for heating and electricity and wind and all renewables. But not about solar cooking. And somehow they spoke about it. And he said, there is this guy, <laughs> and they said, give me his phone number and make the contact. And then I was there a few weeks later, because they have, every year they have a conference there. And uh, in, I started in May, it was in July, two months later. And we say in German, among the blinds, the one eyed is king. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I knew almost nothing, <laughs> but they, Totally nothing. So uh, it was interesting for them, and we uh, built a few um, cardboard cookers there. And then in these uh, rooms, there were the other high-tech stuff, solar panels, and so on, plus my card uh, cardboard cooker. <laughs> and uh, it seemed to be interesting for them. Then um, later in November or so, we made a telephone call. I knew they have different conferences in the course of the year there, and I said you need a solar cooking conference and they said we had the same idea please do so we have no time because there is something else to do but uh, we, we set a date and then um, yeah I had to contact some uh, speakers and I found out that uh, if you have one you have them all because everybody knows everybody <laughs> in Germany and now I know it is the same around the globe <laughs> and, yeah. and here um, if you don't know single people, but if you talk a while, you, you know somebody. Uh, yes. Or, yeah. Mm, yeah. It's, all, it's, it's a phenomenon, but <laughs> sure. I, I, I experience it very often. Yeah, and so uh, I came in closer contact with the German solar cooking family and invited some of them at our first conference and in 2009 in the, in the solar center. There was Wolfgang Schäffler. Sure. Because oh, yes. he is uh, one of the worldwide famous gurus <laughs> and I, I found him on the internet, made a telephone call and he said yes, at once. <laughs> so that, I mean, in our community we know some big names, nobody outside knows them, yes. they are not like film stars. <laughs> They are very approachable, everybody I, I met so far, I think there are no exceptions. And so uh, I directly uh, had contact with the top level <laughs> Yes. and they know others. So um, then one year later I sat together with a friend who 
has the same connections in the field of electric cars because in 2010, 2010 they had not, uh, it was not so well known as it is now. So if you had an electric car, it was necessary to know others because when you wanted to cross the country, you need some possibilities to recharge your batteries and they were all connected. So he said, Mark, um, let's make a podcast together. <laughs> I think it was his idea. And the basic idea was, I knew the solar cooking guys, he the electric car, guy, car guys. And so it was uh, a possibility to let them tell their stories, what they had contributed in each field. Because I thought, uh, at that time, I thought it is a German thing. Because the main solar parabolic cooker, the SK-14, yes. was invented in southern Germany by Dieter Seifert. And the main box cooker, La Sola, was invented by Jo Hasler, also a German. And I thought it is similar to what happened 150 years ago with the cars. But it, now it is not possible to speak with Gottlieb Daimler or Karl Benz or so. But the solar cooking guys are still alive. And so it is a possibility to, to collect something like oral history. Yeah. Later I learned, or I, I knew it from this mailing list from, from SCI, uh, there are many good people who have contributed a lot around the globe and not only in Germany. But I had a good. Uh, raw material or uh, several people who are worth uh, interviewing and so we started with this and um, after a few uh, and we started the postcard Sunport and uh, from the first day we opened this and not only stayed with these two topics but uh, there are so many interesting people who do something what everybody should know and so uh, last week I published uh, episode 283 wow. after 13 years um, about uh, someone who makes miso manually in Berlin sure. and uh, so um, if I have the impression it is something good which brings us to a good future, I let them tell their story. Yep. But now I'm here in A Coruña and uh, this is again a possibility to speak with different people about solar cooking and solar drying. Yes. Yeah, like you. <laughs> yes. And so here we are. And uh, the, going back three years now, 2020, uh, we met. And uh, I remember Michael approached me and said, I hear you have a, a solar cooking museum. And I was a little embarrassed to say, well, it's, you know, it's just my backyard and my garage. But, you know, I had determined by that time to start calling it a legitimate museum, capital letter M. Yeah. And so I consented. And uh, during the interview, I kept thinking, well, you know, maybe I should be doing this where I'm at. And uh, it didn't really tumble until I got home and then the pandemic hit. Yeah. And then it was a, it was a no-brainer because while well, I was stuck in the states and Michael was stuck in Germany more pretty much right, and uh, the rest is history. Yeah. 80, uh, 80 published uh, videos so far. I think it's eighty and over a hundred people because some of them are two or three at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so that was a that was a real turnaround for me. I was really deep into solar cooking, and seeing your devotion to finding the people and archiving their histories that's just so important. I'm so thankful that you do this. Um, in 2016, we had organized our first conference in FAO, the first mm -hmm. console food, and I met Julie Green. Yes. At that time, she was the director of SCI, and we, we had a lot of conversation there, and I recorded an interview with her. And um, I asked her, could you find somebody in the US uh, to do what I do here, because I won't travel, and I am not familiar with the language and the culture and everything. Um, it is better somebody who is based there does this. And she said, no, <laughs> oh. you have begun this, go on. <laughs> so And so I'm very happy that you came to the conclusion, uh, you, uh, you you found your second calling yes. or so. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I, I see it on YouTube, what you are doing. And uh, it's overwhelming. Uh, thank you a lot for oh, this. Well, no, thanks for, thanks for the support. And uh, uh, I mean, I, 
I wasn't really on the fence when I emailed Michael. I was yeah. pretty much decided, but I wanted a, I wanted a little affirmation to know am I on the right track and uh, choosing video. Yeah. Uh, boy, that's a challenge because it's way more work than audio. Yes. <laughs> but uh, but it's such a it's it's so gratifying to be able to take the camera and say here is Kurt Newbeck's experiments yeah. with reflectors. Uh, here's uh, Tom Hoffman with the Solar Z. He's actually got a working prototype right outside his kitchen. And to be able to say, this is a guy who walks the talk. He's developing a solar cooker, but yeah. he also solar yeah. cooks. Yeah. Uh, the Solar Education Project, Mary and Jennifer, uh, where they are, they're not just uh, sharing their expertise overseas, but also locally in Ohio, uh, the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Yeah. Anyway, so I thank yeah. you for, yeah. for basically tipping the scale right down to, to the on button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right now you have the blog going. What else? Do you have anything else in uh, going in that? Do you, I know the blog also solar includes cooking. yes, yeah, any solar cooking or even you know I don't know permaculture or yeah. you interview people yeah. a lot on the on your yeah, yeah. blog. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, um, solar <laughs> cooking. Um, I mean, uh, I just spoke about the conferences in the solar center in North Germany. We yep. did it every year since then. Uh, except these uh, 2020 and following years, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, now we, we continue. Um, and uh, I came in contact with uh, Celestino uh, and others and um, was uh, part of the committee from the beginning when we started the Consul Food Conferences sure. here. So, um, because I have no balcony and my garden is half an hour dry, I live in the mm -hmm. middle of uh, Düsseldorf and my garden is at the border sure. and um, have no garden house there, so I have not the infrastructure, the pot and, and everything for cooking, so I have a, a papillon cooker standing there. Oh, nice, I, yes. I, I, was, yeah, I had the chance to buy it uh, second hand. And it is more an investment for the future. So when I have my garden house, I have my pots and everything there, and I will cook more than now. Now and then I cook there, but not much. So I'm more on this um, networking level, uh, and and my, as a, as a networker, multiplier, uh, mm -hmm. collecting these interviews, and uh, leave the practical cooking to others. Sure. <laughs> presently. <laughs> Yes, and the other, and, and it is part of a bigger um, interest um, in 2010, same year when we started the podcast, um, I founded, together with others, I founded the Düsseldorf Local Initiative for uh, the Transition Town Initiative. Um, I, I won't explain the Transition Town Movement, sure. came from England, from permaculture, but uh, the basic idea is, if you look into our world, be it traffic, agriculture, the health system, whatever, it is not if you would have described it when you have when you have uh, three free wishes or so. Right. It is all developed in totally the, the wrong direction. So we have to reinvent our world, I would say, or rebuild it in all different fields and. Um, this is one element of it, renewable energies, solar cooking, um, and what I'm even more interested in is gardening, uh, nutrition, saving seeds, uh, I'm organizing every year, I'm organizing a um, so-called uh, Saatgut Festival, festival of uh, seeds. It is about heirloom seeds uh, yes. in contrast to hybrids. Uh, because it is uh, for, let's say, food sovereign, mm -hmm. sovereignty uh, or independence, um, it is necessary to have seeds which can reproduce the plant in the same way from year to year. Sure. And um, I think it is the biggest in Germany, or one of the biggest, uh, because the <laughs> Düsseldorf has a big advantage of location within Germany because I think there is no other city. Düsseldorf has 600,000 people, but within one driving hour you have 5 million. Yeah, we are totally overpopulated there, but the plus is uh, if you organize something, you find enough people who come and are interested. 
and um, so our festival, the, the biggest was uh, we started in 2015, and I think there were, we had a school for one day, and in the classrooms were the different uh, small one man, two or three man uh, gardening companies who. Uh, breed their old varieties of something, yes. some edible plants normally. Sure. And then um, it grew a few hundred people from year to year. The biggest was in 2019 with three, three and a half thousand people in one day and it was totally overcrowded and it was beyond the optimum. Next year uh, it was forbidden and next year again because of these uh, human rights uh, reduction, let's say, um, and uh, now uh, this year we started again with 1400 people or so and I think it will rise in the, in the coming years, but it is really important to give everybody the opportunity to buy his base uh, assortment. So, in the best case, you can uh, come once and then you are independent for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. If you learn how to multiply your seeds and, and harvest them in fall and have them for the next year. Um, we want that everybody knows what he eats and can decide it. And this, uh, if, you gar if you have your own garden, then you need the right seeds and otherwise you need what you buy or you must be able to trust. So it has to be, in any case, it has to be organic, regional, seasonal. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, this festival was founded in Bonn, 80 kilometers south of Düsseldorf, mm -hmm. the old capital, um, and um, they made it in 2013 and 14. 15, they, they didn't have the power, potential, whatever, resources to do it. And they are uh, an NGO, the, the, those who made it are an NGO, Germany-wide. And so one member of the board lived in Dusseldorf and said, uh, if you can, if we cannot do it in Bonn, but we, I have people around me, we can do it in Dusseldorf. And so we get an Excel spreadsheet with all the addresses of the exhibitors and transplanted it to us, plus our personal contacts filled it up a little bit. And uh, then next year they did it again in Bonn, but said, please go on doing it also in Dusseldorf. And so we did it every year. Hmm? When, okay. when I think of seeds, I think of uh, it's way in the north of Norway, I believe, where they have like an underground cave that's always um, uh, freezing. Yeah, in, uh, uh, or Sweden, Sweden maybe, maybe, but no, 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 no. It is an island. Uh, yeah, yeah. Far below Svalbard. The polar. Yes. Svalbard. Okay. Svalbard. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 There it is. You don't get into that deep. You're more no. identify, preserve. It is a strange concept. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it monopolizes a little bit. It's, uh, it's more practical for the individual to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. and I think we need to have uh, seed banks around the globe. Mm. everywhere and decentralized that is uh, yeah. like the net uh, the internet is the best example for everything uh, you cannot destroy it it is good to have them or to have it forward but uh, it is better to have thousands of seed banks around the globe decentralized maybe for one garden for a village for a small group and exchange it with the neighbors but the more local, the better. The better suited to this place are the abilities of the plants. I heard a presentation by Vandana Shiva. She was awarded the Alternative Nobel Prize, activist in India. And she told a story about a tsunami in the Indian Ocean, which came into the land maybe a mile or two. And uh, the big corporation seeds were not able to grow there because the soil was too salty. Uh, but in her seed bank with old varieties, they had the right varieties who could grow yeah, there. Survived. That is just one example, and you will find many more, where when you have only one or two varieties, uh, normal under optimum uh, conditions they grow but normally the, you have yeah. any problem problems of any kind insects flooding whatever 
and yeah. so it is good to have 10,000 different varieties and one will be the, the right one for you. Yes. It's but, just a, for, for survival, it is necessary. Yeah. To hear that that's, uh, the, the, the seeds that did work there probably had been there yeah. back in the day when it was a regular thing, minor flooding or the, or the brackish water, you yeah, know, like the salt yeah, yeah. water. Yeah, so, wow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. A good example. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything else you can think of? Yeah, uh, what is related, I mean, one leads to the, to the next, sure. so, but uh, saving soils is uh, crucial <laughs> and is directly connected with the rest. I mean, the, the big corporations, and we have one of the biggest uh, 30 kilometers south of uh, Düsseldorf, uh, who bought Monsanto uh, <laughs> some years ago, um, they have destroyed the soil, because uh, the concept is destroying life. Right. So, and this has no future because it is, as the Indians say, it is empty. It has no spiritual center. It is mm. uh, only making money and controlling mankind and uh, it has no chance in the future. So, um, it is necessary not only to uh, be, to work in a sustainable way, but you have to rebuild soil. You need regenerative agriculture. And um, last year I came upon a method via America uh, from Korea, Korean Natural Farming, KNF. You can Google this. Uh, and uh, it was invented in Korea. And one guy in Hawaii has a YouTube channel, uh, Pure KNF, Dr. Drake. Uh, his name is Drake. And uh, he has tons of videos on YouTube about this. You can learn a lot. I will not go into detail. It is really yeah. complex. But the basic idea is you make your different types of fertilizers yourself for almost no money. It is low cost, low tech, and builds up soil life. Sure. Microbes, fungi, everything. And um, last year was more theory. This year I started to make my first uh, solutions one is a fish fertilizer, just this one example. I went to the market and they gave me fish scraps and I have five kilogram of them combined uh, in different layers in, in a bucket, 10 liter bucket, um, with five kilogram of dark brown sugar. Let it sit, lid closed, forget it for at least a quarter of a year, three months, and then it ferments and the proteins are broken up into amino acids. This stuff is called fish amino acids, FAA, and you dilute it one by thousand with water, and when you water your plants, you include it a little bit. It is a strong nitrogen fertilizer. Wow. And with the system, or part of the system is to watch the plants in which state they are. And they grow in the beginning, they need a lot of nitrogen. Later, they need more calcium or, or phosphorus. And so you have different combinations of your solutions uh, according to what the need of the plants is. And they should explode when they grow, more yes, or less. Yes. And you have big harvests of healthy plants. Uh, pests are not so such a big issue uh, compared to when you use chemical fertilizer yeah. and so on. Look it up. <laughs> sure, sure. All right. Okay. Thanks so much uh, for everything. Okay. Everything. Yes. This is uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good. Okay. We will call that a wrap.